spooky season and we are back with another episode of scaredy chat where we talk about all of your childhood fears and some things that are scaring us today i'm monica Suryagi, and i'm caitlin riley and i am very excited for today's episode because it is truly in the spooky season spirit later on we're going to be talking to daniel montgomery he is an actor he's also a performer and writer in the immersive haunted show creep here in la And he also is a co-host of the Welcome to Deadcast podcast, which is all about all things Goosebumps. And I feel like, Caitlin, that is a a bit of a forte for you in life. Oh, my God. I love Goosebumps so much. So I had to reach out to Daniel because Goosebumps for me was pretty much like my introduction to all things horror. So I know, how much of Goosebumps did you watch as a as a child growing up, Monica? You know, was it your thing? It was, but it was hard. It wasn't on a channel that we had. So I would catch like, and, or maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was just like, it aired on really off hours. And like, it would be very hard to catch it. But when I did, I would like watch, you know, watch the whole thing. And if you could time it right, event sometimes I would find myself in like a block you know, where they would play it for, like, three hours. (laughs) Yeah, no, totally. I think that I was the same way because I don't remember ever having Goosebumps, like, turning on the television in my own home and watching Goosebumps. But I remember going to my friend's house at the time. This was when I was very little. I lived in an apartment. And so we would go to my friend's house who, like, lived in, like, the apartment but, like, on a different floor or something. And I would watch Goosebumps at his house. Um, But then when I was like, I must have been a little bit older, the obsession for some reason really kicked in. And I remember one year for Christmas, I got like three different VHS tapes of Goosebumps. And I still remember it to this day because I watched them like over and over and over again until like the tape like literally broke. Yes. It was. I don't know if you remember these, Monica. I think that we've talked about these before. One we've definitely talked about, but The Haunted Mask. Classic. 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 Don't look in the basement, or st- actually, it's called Stay Out of the Basement. I just looked it up because I was like, what was it called? Don't look in the basement. Get out of the basement. But it's Stay Out of the Basement. Let me double check that. Now I'm paranoid that I got that wrong. <laughs> Stay Out of the Basement. Goosebumps. Yes. Okay. So it's Stay Out of the Basement. That was the second one. And then the third one was, going to also Google this. Hold on. Terror. Tower Goosebumps. Okay. And the third one was A Night in Terror Tower. So basically, these were like kids' version of horror movies. But if I like look back on them, they were like legitimately so scary. Oh my gosh, What, What do you remember about the plot of The Haunted Mask? You know, the first thought that pops into my head is that dumb bitch Carly Beth. And then I have to like, but then I have to like unpack that because I'm like, why do I jump there right away? And then you like (laughs) kind of like remember like, oh, right. Like she was being fucking ridiculous. She never should have taken this mask. The guy didn't want to give it to her and she steals it because she wants to be scary. And then it, you know, obviously latches onto her face. I used to kind of assume that nobody was going to die in these shows because it's for kids, but they do. They die. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, I would say like Goosebumps is probably... They tend not to die on camera. Right. But, like, the the prospect of death is, in fact, all around. Like, there's a lot of ghosts. There's a lot of, like, they died before mm-hmm. the events of this episode. Or, or they like, will die if they don't figure this thing out in 20 minutes. Like... Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because R.L. Stein also writes, a, like, a more adult books or at least more like older teen books and those books people just those like, people die that those books people die left and right and they're just getting stabbed left and right. like constantly yeah like i remember um our was our josh gondelman episode that was one of the books that like freaked him out that was like his like absolute child fear <laughs> was like an rl sign book and the truth is like you know i think that without goosebumps i probably wouldn't be doing this podcast because this is like my my horror interest res like it began with with goosebumps 100 you know mm-hmm. it was yeah 
But I still have not watched the the movie with uh, Jack Black. But I've actually heard it is very good. I have heard that too. I haven't seen it either. But people liked it. People, it got the approval. It got the approval. I did. I did Wikipedia the plot, and in Wikipedia in the plot, um, some weird stuff happens in that movie. Uh-oh. Some like weird. There's like a weird twist. I was like, oh okay, mm. we like really went there. Um, but I find it fascinating well, to have like. Jack Black play Earl Stein. <laughs> oh yeah, that is that's that's interesting casting. Yeah, a choice. But my only problem with Goosebumps was that the logo was that puppet guy. Oh and yeah, I always had problems with that. I was like, oh, I want to like this, and I will watch all the stuff, but that puppet is not okay. <laughs> oh my god, Monica! I like I think about that a lot. Um, his name is Slappy. I didn't. By the way, I didn't fucking know that. That's terrible. You're like. Did I want to? I don't know. But <laughs> I, I often think about whether Slappy was a reaction to Chucky. Because while he has they red don't hair like too. look. Yeah, he, he has red hair. They don't like look alike, but they kind of This is a vibe. Yeah, there's a vibe. It's like they're both puppets. Well, I guess Chucky's a doll, actually. Obviously, Chucky's a doll and he's a puppet, but you can kind of tell it's like Slappy, Chucky, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, like, what's our mm-hmm. response to this other franchise? We also need a t- scary doll thing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, at some point we'll have to talk about Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because I did have Nickelodeon, so I think I actually ended up watching a lot more of that. It's a great show. It's a great show. <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah. If you guys have any, like, kids horror that really informed your particular horror taste, like, please send them to us. Because, you know, we have Goosebumps, we have Are You Afraid of the Dark? But who knows? There might be, like, more that we're missing. Yeah. Oh, there was there was a book series. Do you oh. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark? No, it was like the names were alliteration. It was like there are the Bailey, Bailey School Kids. Yes. yes. Yes, I love the Bailey School Kids. They never did anything with that, no, as far as I know. That's IP like, people. Come on. It's like wo- werewolves aren't women's basketball coaches. Exactly. Like that was what it was. <laughs> or it's like teachers aren't tonsillitis specialist it wasn't like that but like it was like de- aren't it- lunch ladies i think that actually is a literal one <laughs> so <laughs> it's a lichen one <laughs> but guys yeah i'm really excited to talk to daniel maybe he has some goosebumps insight that we don't know yet oh he must if he talks about goosebumps on a weekly basis i am ready i'm ready Okay, Scaredy Chat listeners, I am so excited about this episode. Today, we have actor, podcaster, all-around awesome, immersive theater, writer, performer, Daniel Montgomery. Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. This is so exciting for me. I off mic, I already, like, gushed over. Daniel (laughs) is in my favorite... Um, LA Immersive Theater show. I know that I've mentioned on this podcast how much I love Immersive Theater and Haunted Houses, obviously. But Daniel, uh, you are just like helping create like one of my absolute favorite spooky season memories this I'm year. So, I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> well, I'm and I'm so glad. I'm so glad I can scare you to death. Yeah. Yes. It's very, guys- <laughs> it's a key part of who Caitlin is, as our listeners know. So this is a big moment, everyone. Caitlin <laughs> is meeting a provider of the fear. This is a big deal. It's my job. Yes. I am very curious. What is your childhood fear? Tell us about that and tell us how it affected you, I guess, you know, overall into your adult life, because, you know, you're clearly into very spooky, creepy things now. Yes, I, am, I, know. I really want to know what someone who creates fear for others was afraid of. I'm, sure. I can't wait. Please dive in. Well, I'm not, I mean, it's really hard to scare me, y'all. I am not <laughs> easily scared. And I would love to be, like, I'm so on board, but not a lot scares me. Um, but when Caitlin asked me originally, my first thought was, it, it, this thing that happened when I was growing up, and and it's and it still like lingers in my brain a little bit but right around halloween um Ooh. in 1999 a kid who was uh, 2 years younger than i was at the time uh was found dead in our neighborhood I and mean, this is going to get real dark so here we oh, go oh go there yeah, we've uh, already we've heard it yep yep and he was found strangled in this um uh house that was being built in our neighborhood and nobody knew for years who had done it 
And it was, you know, two days before Halloween. It was Halloween was a Sunday like it is going to be this year in the year of the Lord 2021. Spooky. And it, you know, it's like it, it was a terrifying moment in gr- growing up because I was a kid in this neighborhood and a kid was a kid was found dead. And at this and at the same time, um, there was, it was kind of like a confluence of fears, really. Blair Witch Project had just come out and I I had seen it at too young of an age, you know, w- w- snuck it in the movie theater and I saw it and I grew up in North Carolina <laughs> but, and there was big old woods behind my house. Oh no. And, you know, there were bundles of sticks all over the place and I felt like, ooh, like there's a witch that's going to come get me. There is a murderer in the neighborhood that is going to come get me. And at the same time, we had our, our house being repainted and we had to keep the windows open to keep it dry, keep um the paint drying. And I was like, well, first of all, the Blair Witch is going to get me. Second of all, like this killer in the neighborhood is going to sneak through the window and get me on Halloween. And it felt very real. I mean, because it was. There was even at church on Sunday, it was talked about and how, you know, we needed to be safe on Halloween night. So, you know, stranger danger was a big old fear. I thought, you know, I was going to be kidnapped. I thought I was going to be taken away by that mysterious whoever had done that murder. And that was what I was afraid of. I really, I I remember being at school and a mysterious white van showed up and, you know, some of the kids freaked out. And and there was a moment where I was like, the killer's shown up at school. He's going to get us. Um, and to, to, to tie this all up, they found out years later who had done it. Oh my and God, it who? was a, another kid in the neighborhood had done it. What? Yep. What? Are you kidding? No, I'm, that's worse. That's I'm so serious. much worse. A kid who is four years older than that kid. And he said, the, the, the kid was playing hide and seek and never came home that night. And they found his body that night. And one of the kids he was playing hide and seek with um, had said they were wrestling too hard and strangled him to death. That's so. That's like some omen shit. Like that isn't that terrifying. Uh-huh. That's a that twist. is so. That is. I thought it was gonna be like it was the creepy guy that everybody thought no, was creepy, but it was harmless. Another kid in the neighborhood. Worst. Oh my god. I'm googling this. If there's a true I crime have, podcast, I, ha- I have <laughs> like a, a last year. I was writing. You know, we were on a little bit of a break from Creep LA because. You know, how how can you do immersive theater in a pandemic? Although we did figure it out. But I ended up writing, y'all, I'm crazy. But I ended up writing four screenplays last year to be like, I've got to get my creative energy out. And after I finished the fourth one, the next one, I was like, I want to write about this. Like, I want to work through it. And I found all of the newspaper articles from the Charlotte Observer. And I have them in like a document on my computer because I got a little little obsessed. A little obsessed. I want to read all of these articles. I was yeah. there. I know. feel like for a lot of people, Wild. like, you know, the stranger danger idea is a common childhood fear, but sure. it's usually based, it's usually entirely theoretical. Like, I've just watched too much, much stuff, you know, it's not, but for you, it's like very real and very close to home. Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was terrifying and it took on a little bit of like a, like an urban legend quality because at the I, the way I remember it is a little different from how I've read the you know the the newspaper articles because at the time they said that his I mean they said that the boy's body was found partly in a shower stall and I think what that <laughs> means is like half of his body was in the shower stall half yeah. of it was out in this abandoned house but at the time it was reported as part of his body was found. Oh, good. And then, mm-hmm. you know, and then, like, it took on this myth and sort of, like, you know, quality of, I remember, you know, memories lie, but I was like, and they found half of his body, you know, and we were like, not only is it, like, a killer, but he's, like, chopping us up. And, like, you know, it was, and I look back and I was like, oh, it was horrific, but it wasn't what I thought it was. Right. It wasn't, like, you know, a room yeah, full of blood and body parts. Sure. You know. I, mean, I hope it was like a horrific accident, but that's still very disturbing. Because that means some kid was holding on to that secret. For like yes. for a while. How years. long did it take for people to figure it out? Ten years. Oh, oh my god. Wow. Yeah. And the kid and the kid, y'all. I don't think it was an accident. Yeah. Oh. 
I was I'm not sure. That. He 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 <laughs> he was a. I mean, he um, based on the articles that I had read following up on it. Um, you know, he had he troubled kid and and Yikes. was a big kid. Was like six feet, like six feet, two hundred twenty five pounds. Oh like, wow huge 12 year old like huge and you know they pulled some stuff where they're like he had books of serial killers in his on his table and i was like let's not like let's not a let's lot not of us there. read those books you're like so like, did i <laughs> i was like so did i and like i'm good like i'm good <laughs> but um you know based on the information since it it really seems like it was not um t- totally an accident yeah that's kind of the vibe that i was i was trying to give uh, this stranger a benefit of the doubt but yeah same yeah yikes 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 so that's what scared me when i was little yeah you know what big you should have been scared of that you should have held on to that anxiety forever still there (laughs) it's still there it's i mean it's so it's so funny because i mean something's not quite as not quite as crazy i guess in the sense that this was like a small child and stuff something similar happened in my neighborhood that i will probably discuss off mic because i it's a big case or whatever, but it does affect how you see the world because, like, I grew up in the suburbs. I grew up on Long Island. I was going to say a pretty safe place, but there's actually quite a lot of of crime on Long Island, like uh, a lot of, like, weird stories. Like, I think sure. we had the, the Amy Fisher thing, the Long oh, yeah. Island Lolita. Right. A lot of random stuff like that. Um but it does make you change the way you see the world. Like, sure. the sub- suburbs always felt really safe, you know? Yeah, and we also, you know, grew up in what was supposed to be a really safe, na- super safe neighborhood. And and I really, like, started to look at things very differently after that. And, and at the same time, I was really discovering sort of horror. I really wanted to challenge myself with seeing Blair Witch Project. And I end up seeing Scream on, v- like, VHS. And it looked like, you know, I grew up in, North, like, as I said, North Carolina. And, and the house, some of the houses in at least Casey Becker's house in the beginning of Scream looks like houses that were not far from my neighborhood. And I was like, it's all real. It's right it's all here real and it's in all my here. hometown. Yes, it's right in my backyard, you know. Um, so it made, it, and it made Halloween very scary that year. It really did. Um and maybe I'm still, you know, now I'm still dealing with it, I guess, since I'm painting my walls Halloween orange. <laughs> yes, it's like all of that, like, morphed into, like, okay, this is who I'm going to become now. Yeah, I'm, like, still, I like, the stuff that scares me again, which isn't isn't a bunch, but when it does, I want to, like, I want to know all about it. Like, I want to figure it out. I want to, you know, learn. I want to understand why it scares me and feel like I can, I don't know conquer it by learning everything there is about it so i become you know the expert on it in a way that's yeah, kind of makes why sense. yeah that's kind of why monica and i are doing this podcast because you know we love horror and you know we write horror and make horror things and obviously we're doing this podcast but we also like want to know why things scare us and whenever you ask someone what their childhood fears are it's never just Oh, I thought clowns were like spooky or whatever. Like I thought they were creepy. It's always like something else. There's like some other layer something to it. Something happened it's, usually. Yeah. There's yeah. always a thing. But I'm curious, going back to the Blair Witch Project, because that movie, I remember I watched it a little bit later. Um, I think I was in like my early teens when I saw it for the first time. There was something so realistic about it, but not a lot happens, obviously, as you're kind of watching the film until the yeah. end. And yeah. That's what I, that's what I want to ask you about the ending of the Blair yes. Witch Project. Yeah, what, what happened ru- in your brain when you watched it? Ruined it ruined my life. I mean, it ruined my life. It like <laughs> I, I, it was the it, it to me that is the scariest movie I've ever seen. It really, it really fundamentally fundamentally shifted something inside of me. And I, like as I said, I really when I was younger, I really wanted to. I don't know. I wanted to get scared. I wanted to figure it out. And and my parents wouldn't even take me to go see those movies. My mom's best friend, Mrs. Kaliski, would take me and she would get so scared. And so, you know, I was like 10 or something, you know, like, would, like or maybe younger. Like I, and she would be the one, she took me to see Halloween H2O. She took me, um, you know, and, and Blair Witch Project, what, one of the reasons why I love it so much, I watch it. I literally fell asleep to it last night. I watched. <laughs> I, I I can't. I I love it. A lullaby. It, 
you know, and I do. I, I'm a, I'm an, I'm crazy because I do. I fall asleep to a horror movie every night. And last night I was like, I really want to get like, where's my? I need to feel the Blair Witch, and <laughs> I, uh, I didn't, I, I didn't quite understand watching it that it, you know, that it was that it wasn't real, you know. So I was like, what is this? You know, I, I know this is a movie, but like, what is this? And I thought it, it. I thought it like respected me as a young audience member because there was that snippet right at the beginning about facing the corner. And th- to tie that through all the way to the end, I was like, this is smart. Like this treats me as a smart audience member. You had to listen to get that. Like, I like what these people are doing and I will <laughs> never sleep again. Like I just, I, 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 it really messed me up because it, all those interviews at the beginning felt so, most of them feel so real. And I, if there was a part, portion of the movie that I felt was real, I was like, well, those interviews weren't fake. Like those weren't <laughs> actors doing most of those interviews. And to tie that back at the end, woo, and to have the final credits just be like, the final credits are short and they have like just, it's not even music. It's just like creepy sounds. And I was deeply shook walking out of the movie theater deeply. And I asked my parents if I could sleep in their room Aww. that night. I, and they said, no, but Aww. like I, I, but we, you know, we did have this huge back, like huge, not huge backyard, but we had wood woods and my yeah. twin brother and I would sometimes go walk around in the woods and bef- years before the movie, there'd be like bundles of sticks back there, you know, nice. that pe- like people were there. There was like an abandoned um, uh, tree house. There was like a little hut. Like it was like miles of woods behind our house. And so I was like, oh, OK, so this all is real. And like these smart, smart people like, you know, put together this tied together this little thread right at the end and to put like little little bloody baby hands on the stone yeah. walls come on like nightmare <laughs> nightmare fuel but my brother used to scare me a lot when we were younger because he just we would just go stand in the corner and I'm like no <laughs> don't you know it's so effective and it's so and and I I understand why sometimes people who see it now are like I guess it's not that scary but I want to say like no 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 you don't know what it was like at the time. Like, it's such a slow burn. Like, give me a slow burn. Give it to well, me. I love the fact that, like, not that much happens. And then the end, because it feels so real. Because if if there were, like, tiny little jump scares throughout the whole film, and there's, like, some, I guess you could say, but... It wouldn't feel as real. It would feel like, oh, this is a this is a, a planned thing where every like twenty minutes something happens, sure. but it's just sort of like, mm, oh no, they're in the house, they're in the tiny hut. What's going on? What's happening? Why is he in the corner? She's screaming. She's freaking out. It's a great film, but I'm curious. You know, I've been to a bunch of your shows. I think they're amazing. But for people who are like, what is this? I don't live in L.A. Like, yeah. what are you like, talking about? It? It's, it is <laughs> so hard. About? It is yeah. so hard to explain. It so, is. I've so, tried to people. I know. It, it is. It's, and, and it, it do, I'm I thank you that it, uh, thank you. Um, I, yeah. I, I want it to have a little element of magic. So six years ago, um, one of my best friends, Justin Fix, and I wanted to do okay. our own sort of twist on a classic haunted, it was a bucket list item for him, uh, our own classic, our, our own twist on a classic haunted house. And we were theater kids and we thought, what if we did, we had this warehouse space, what if we throw together this sort of maze haunted thing that felt very real, where you could be, t- it wasn't super extreme, but you could be touched and you could be like you would have to you'd have to crawl you'd have to hide in a box you would um be told to do things you would get split up from your group and it was just major playtime and we i ended up writing it and we cast it with some friends and we called it creep and it and it did very well we sold out a lot of tickets and we thought let's do it again next year bigger and better so the idea of like immersive theater is it feels incredibly real and you are placed into an almost um, horror movie esque environment with a story where you can interact with the actors and move through a fully realized space. Put your phone away and just like give in to the horror. And over the years, we've sort of 
changed. You know, it's a different theme every year. It's a different space every year. And, you know, Caitlin mentioned, you mentioned the Willows. After we did Creep, we do the show called Creep every Halloween here in LA. And after a couple years of doing Creep just in the fall, we thought maybe we can do this year round. Like maybe there's an audience for this type of thing year round. So we thought, well, we did like classic haunted house. What if we did our weird twist on a murder mystery dinner? And we got this beautiful house next door to the murder house from American Horror Story. And we thought like, what if we make this a two hour dinner experience with a creepy family and you just have to show up and we'll make dinner with you, like the cast, the characters will make dinner with the guests and it'll be a wild sort of supernatural, like crazy night out. And for us, the idea is like immersion, which means characters never break character. If there's an emergency, we don't break character. We have protocol for all of that. The police have shown up. We stay in character like we never. You you have rules for that type of experience. You give the rules in a character. And to me, that is the element of magic that's so fun. This year's a little different post or during pandemic because there are some extra levels of making everybody feel comfortable and keeping everything safe. But we still do our best to really feel like you're living a full fantasy and not taken out of that, you know, out of the reality of the situation. But it's all just scary fun. And I I also am wondering, because, like, you come from, I feel like, this Venn diagram of what's going to be someone that loves horror. You had a real-life crime. You saw a very you know, classic scary movie at a very young age. And you had like kind of like a creepy like home, like the yard and the woods behind you. So you had these three things, you're in the middle. And I think that gives you like kind of the perspective on fear that you have. So I'm curious now, like when you're thinking about what's going to scare someone, like your mission is to scare people. What do you think of and where are you like pulling that from? Mm, Well, I mean, I pulled like, I mean, I, I I often pull from sort of c- classic fears in a way, but I always pull a little bit from real life, you know, things that things that sort of like tickled me or twisted me. So when we were doing the show on nightmares, I thought, well, I've had some pretty weird dreams. Like, let me just actually pull from the dreams that that scared me, you know, Um uh, the stuff that we are doing for uh, the show this year, there, there's a there, there's a portion of the show that's about this house, and you know this house where apparently maybe these murders happened, and there is a house here in Los Angeles. I can't remember the name of the house. I just listened to a podcast about it, but and it was just sold. I think a couple months ago, but there was an urban legend about this house in Los Feliz where it was, uh, it was said that this guy, um, doctor, I think murdered his family at Christmas dinner, basically. And I was like, that's never left my brain. One year on my birthday, we went to the house, we trespassed, we looked in the window. It was creepy. There was stuff in the house and it's never left my brain. So I wrote part of, I wrote my version of that into the show this year. And that is the room that I am in, in this year's production. So I kind of like think back and pull from like, you know, real life things or personal experiences that sort of like twisted me a little bit and just sort of expand upon them. You know, it's, As I said, things don't scare me often, but when they do, they leave an impact. So, like, if it's going to scare me, I bet it's going to scare somebody else. So, you know, so um, usually I try and pull from that. And sometimes I have no idea where the ideas come from. None. I just, like, start. I just, oftentimes I'll just start writing and be like, whoa, that was, okay, I guess that was what was in your brain. I didn't know that. You're like, whoa, Maybe that... you should talk to somebody about that. Yeah, you're like, whoa, that was fucked up. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, every now and then it's like that, where I was like, I have no idea where that came from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but there is something that we have not touched upon in your fear journey yet, and that is Goosebumps and yes. your podcast. Yeah. And we actually, in our intro, talked a lot about Goosebumps because that was like my introduction to the horror world. Absolutely. And, and my passion was ignited there. So how did Goosebumps come into your life? And like, tell us all about that. Why dedicate your life to recapping Goosebumps books? Oh my gosh. It w- You know, it really was, 
I love goosebumps so much. Me and too. again, you should see you should see the rest of my room because it's dripping in goosebumps. Um, I have goosebumps <laughs> artwork on the walls. I have goosebumps pillows. I have goosebumps blanket. I have it's 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 an obsession. When I w- when my twin brother and I were little, there there was something that really clicked with us. Um, uh, it's something about the 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 covers, the artwork, the colors, the the silliness of it, um, the twists. It's funny. It's dark. It really felt like it was our insides. And you know, we we. we I've never connected with something so quickly. And I always thought when I was little, wow, I love this so much. I wonder what I'm going to love when I get older. I wonder what's going to connect with me this much. And it turns out it's still goosebumps. So my brother and I, we, we would talk about it so much and still get so much joy from watching the episodes and reading the books. And we, and then this, the movie comes along and we thought we talk about this every day like why not start a podcast about it and we got a little scholastic blessing and like you know we're still we're still running we're we've done we're done with the first 62 books the original 62 we're now in the middle of we've done the tales to give you goosebumps we're now doing the give yourself goosebumps books and soon we'll move on to um goosebumps series 2000 but um there is something about the sort of serialized nature of it all the 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 colors the slappy's face the haunted mask oh, i hate him it, i know i know and i actually have the original artwork on my wall and i won't show you monica i won't show you because you'll thank scream. you thank you um, it, it just it tickles me in a way i almost can't describe it's just it, it unearthed every sort of like little uh, like giggliness and nastiness inside of both of me and my brother, I think it's that perfect element of like a little bit funny, a lot dark, and like totally cute. It is oh, that's so true. It is cute yeah, too. It is cute. Like it's at the end of like, the day, it's cute. We like. I just love the like. I love the bad taglines. I love the garish <laughs> colors. I love the. St- Stupid twists. I love like some of the thoughtlessness. I love the cheesy titles. I love it so deep in my bones. Like I just, it, I, and, and the fact that Arl Stein's keep has never stopped writing them. Like I, when I write, I often like I Arl Stein goes title first. And for me, a lot of times I'm like, I got to figure out the title first. And like, I've got to get there. I've got to get that cheesy one tagline. And then I do when, before I do a show, write a show or a script, I do like the back of the book. I do. What is the back of the book of this story? Like, what is the back of the book of this script? What is like, how can I like, for, how can this be like the back of a Goosebumps book? Because it just is like such a perfect little kitschy package of like spooky joy that nothing else delivers in the same way. Like, I just love it so much. I love how much you love it. It makes me want to go back and read them all. <laughs> like it's like reigniting the I love recommend. of the series. Yes. And the TV show is like, is just as good, bad. Yes. Like it is. Oh, just. <laughs> I mean, some, some of it is so bad that it, and some of it is <laughs> exceptional. Like the, the haunted mask. Name, we a better, talking about ne- that. name a better we piece are... of children's media. Name a better you piece. Can. You, you can't can. find better. There like, it's perfect. It's perfect. We, like, it's we terrifying. Were... The There's a lesson still. There's a moral. There is. A symbol of love. Like, Harley. Like, <gasps> Harley <laughs> Beck. I'll, ne- ne- I'll never have kids. But if I did, <laughs> Harley Beth. <laughs> like, okay, come so on. we were. We were, we're just, just talking, talking about, about this. this. And we were like, that bitch, Carly Beth, man. Like, that bitch. She, <laughs> so correct us if we're wrong. She shows the paper mache head to the mask. Like to herself, to, I think. To show That's that correct. It's a, right. And In the why? book, she puts it over her head. <laughs> um, but they're like, no, how's that We're like, that's work? too complicated. <laughs> um, but no, yes, she shows the paper mache head that her mother had made. Conveniently. And says, this is a symbol of love. To put it on a stick with like a little red piece of fabric, like genius. Like she's a genius. 
She's an icon. She she's a legend. <laughs> she is the moment. Like she's like what else could you want? Caitlin, she's, you should she's be the Carly Beth for Halloween. You Caitlin, you already are Carly yes. Beth. I aren't we all Carly like, Beth? At the guys? end of the day, are we all Carly Beth? <laughs> Carl Stein's just, youngest protagonist at 11 years old for oh, Goosebumps book, coming through to be what? 12 for Haunted Mask 2. I love the facts. Like, wow. come, like, come on. Like, Carly Beth. Like, Carly Beth for president. Like, yes. that that act, like that actor should have gotten the, the awards. She really like, should be more of a mainstream icon in the horror world when you think yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, yes. like, it, it is it is class. Like, it, it that and that aired, like... Prime time, I think, uh, don't get me wrong, I think it was October 26th or 28th, 1995, like record breaking, record breaking viewership. Like it just doesn't get, it just doesn't get any better. It doesn't. Laurie Strode, Sydney Prescott. Laurie Strode found shaking. Carly, Carly <laughs> Beth. Sydney Prescott could never. Sydney could Prescott never. who? Like, yeah, imagine her showing ghost face. Like, look at all this paper mache this, of my head. My dead mom. Face. Like, like Loves this is me. a symbol of love. Like, I and okay. Like, <laughs> come on. Yes, it it's and and some of it is like you know the movies are not good. Like, are not good. Like, let's keep it cla- Like, let's keep it classic. I um I probably shouldn't say some of this, but you know they are planning on re- rebooting the TV show, <gasps> and I was in contact with a friend of mine who who's working on it and. He was asking me his, you know, my advice. And I was like, <laughs> target audience. And he's, yes. like, he's like, should it be 30 minutes? Should it be an hour? Should it be nostalgic? Should it be, you know, what should it be? And I was like, nostalgic. Yeah. <laughs> what are you how, thinking? How dare you ask? 30 minutes? <laughs> Give me an hour. Ooh. Shoving those books into 30 minutes? A disservice. Make it an hour and make it for me. Make it for millennia. Like, do it's not make us. it for the children it's of today. Us. Fuck those and, kids. Yeah. They have their own shit. Yeah, no, they have they, enough. I don't care about children. No. Make it for me. Me. Those are the people that are going to be watching it. Like, come on. I don't know if that will happen, but. I hope so. I'm glad they talked to you first because got to get so. that. It was, it was, yeah. a, it was a while ago, so I'm not, I'm not sure it will ever I'll be devastated happening. if this does not happen. I'll I, be honest. I'm going to, no matter what happens, I am going to live in the satisfaction of knowing that what we have with the Haunted Mask and what is there, it won't get better. So you know what? True. Do, do what you must. Do what you need. What we have is enough it's forever it's forever and i mean i'll probably watch it as soon as we're done like i it's the piece of media i've seen more than anything in my entire life well daniel it's that time for us to play a game called chill or chilling where we run hypothetical scenarios by you and if you're down would do chill not gonna do that too scary it's chilling Okay, Daniel, we have the first one, which is earthquakes, chill or chilling. We live in LA. We experience them all the time. Do they freak you out at all? Chill. Wow. I feel like we're going to get chill for everything. I love it. I even have, like, I have, I'm really asking for it. I have a a big old uh, framed picture above my bed of, like, a cast photo. There's going to be an earthquake. It's going to fall on me, and it is going to kill me. And you know what? Chill. Yes. You have this smug look on your face like, chill, bitch. Chill. Here's our next one. Performing a seance. Chill or chilling? Chill. <laughs> I got I got four Ouija boards in my living room. One in my trunk oh, of my car. Oh, no. No. Oh, my Daniel, goodness. No. This is our thing. Monica and I both have decided that that's horrible. And that, like, that's the craziest thing you can do. E- whether you believe in it or not. Why? The risks are so high yeah. and is, the reward it, is so it has low. It has been done more than once in this apartment. <laughs> so who who have you brought into your apartment? Who is now living there? No one that I can tell. Nobody showed uh, up. Bummer. Dang. Bummer. We did we're, like, yeah. We're Nobody. pro Ouija board for you, but anti Ouija yeah. board for us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe my chill nature about it is too chill for the spirits. Genuinely, they're like, they're like what yeah, fun probably. is this? Yeah, like, my, what are we gonna do? Show up in your mirror and you're gonna be like, Hey, what's going on? My, my roommate and his girlfriend are convinced that the house is haunted, and I'm just like, I wish, y'all, like, I wish, 
But like, but it's literally just the wind. Like, it's just the wind. It. So this one is not about ghosts. It is about amusement parks. My other favorite thing. Woo. But upside down roller coasters. Chill or chilling? Chill. I Chill. love it. Throw me. Of course you throw do. Throw me of around. <laughs> throw my body around. If I die on a roller coaster, what a great story. It is a great story. <laughs> it, it is. It around. is. Like, it is. Uh, backwards, also... forwards, upside down, yes. Daniel, you've been a truly delightful guest. <laughs> Thank I've you for having me. I've had a great me. time talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was amazing. Thank you so much for making my dream come true of being able to talk to one of the performers at Creep. Of course. Of, you know, breaking character. Thank you for breaking character. Oh my gosh, for, only for, for you, Caitlin, only for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, Daniel, where can they find you? I know that we mentioned a bunch of things that you're doing, but just to refresh everyone's brains, share your socials. Sure. Tell us everything. You can follow me on Instagram at Daniel X Montgomery. You can follow me on Twitter. It's just Daniel Montgomery. If you're interested in Creep, um, the company, the name of that company is JFI Productions, technically. Um, so if you're searching for Creep, you'll actually, you're actually going to be searching for JFI Productions, and we are at JFI, the letters JFI Productions on Instagram and on Twitter as well, but we're mostly on Instagram. And you can Amazing. you can listen to the podcast, <laughs> Welcome to Deadcast. My, my brother, Matthew Scott Montgomery, and I, we go through all those books and you can listen anywhere you get podcasts. Well, thank you so much for joining us this spooky season and blessing yes. us with your like so pleasantly spooky self. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm so happy to have have um, spooked us all. Yes, I am sufficiently spooked for the evening. <laughs> You're terrified. I'm like I've been envisioning the slappy p- art on your wall, like in my <laughs> own head. Like, what the fuck does that look like? But I don't want you to show me. Okay. I won't. <laughs> she she does mean it. Uh, she does mean that. I believe you. <laughs> anyway, thank you for thanks. respecting that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scaredy Chats. Till next time. Happy Halloween. Bye. Happy Halloween. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Scaredy Chat. We hope you were a little scared and maybe a little relieved about your fears. And if you're having fun listening to this podcast, please rate and review and subscribe so you never miss it and you're ready with us every week. And hey, make sure you follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at scaredychat underscore podcast. And maybe you have a fear and you're wondering if other people are afraid of it too? Well, we probably are, but you should email us your fears at story at scaredychatpod.com and maybe we'll talk about it on the show. Till next time, scaredy cats. Bye. Security Chat was developed and hosted by Caitlin Riley and Monica Moore Suryagi. Produced by Jeff Swimmer. Editing and sound design by Fitz Harris. Theme music by Eric Fashingbauer, with samples by Jeff Zahn and Jack Lenz. And Gail Gilman is the executive producer. Hold up. 